Hello everyone, welcome to another video. So in today's video, we're going to be reacting for the first time to Seaspiracy because I haven't watched it because I've been so crazy flat out busy. But I've seen, you know, all the posts about it. I've seen all the promotions about Seaspiracy. I've been watching carefully, but I just haven't seen the documentary. Now, I remember the filmmaker Ali from back in the days, YouTuber, but obviously now filmmaker and his team. And uh, so um, I'm actually quite excited to see this and uh, we'll be sort of commentating and leaving little comments as we go. So got the Netflix on, we're about to watch. Let's do it. Yeah, hi, my name's Ali. I'm just wondering if you would swap out your plastic straws as it's killing whales and baby sea turtles. Hello? <laughs> but that didn't stop me from tackling this plague of plastic. So I just want to stop in there. The plastic in the ocean, man. Like, wow. Like, it's crazy, dude. Like, the problem with plastic is, like, they package everything in plastic. So unless you're, like, near a farmer's market and, you know, you have access to just products that aren't, wrapped in plastic you're kind of in a bit of a position there it's a bit difficult like you can obviously get a reusable bag you can reuse a bottle you can not use plastic straws plastic cutlery and stuff but if you got to go buy some i don't know pasta and there's not a plastic free you know food pantry around <laughs> Kind of in a bit of position they need to change some laws on that but just the fact that the plastic is killing the animals I mean, you got to admit, that's an animal rights issue, isn't it? Because if they're, if, like I always put it like this, if you put it in the human context, would that be a human rights issue? And the answer is yes, it would. Because like, if there was some type of like material that we couldn't see in our environment and say big corporations were dumping it there and we were walking into it and we were suffocating and dying from it, we would consider that a human rights violation, wouldn't we? So when we talk about like all this... Uh, trash in the oceans killing like whales who are like eating plastic bags or whatever then that's a animal rights violation isn't it so let's keep going I, I can already hear all the fish eaters going oh those poor dolphins Ali please go and save the dolphins but they're probably for lunch had a tuna sandwich probably have some octopus at the restaurant later that night for dinner you know they're probably eating every other sea animal under the sun or under the water. And, uh, but they'll be like, please, Ali, go and rescue those dolphins. But, you know, I get it. People love dolphins. I do too. But, uh, you have to look at the, all the other animals that, you know, you're paying for to be speared and hooked in the face and, you know, suffocated on a, on a boat deck and, uh, disemboweled so you can have a tuna sandwich. Let's keep rolling. So when I see the uh, dolphins getting herded into the cove there, like, it musters the same emotion as when I see, like, a bunch of tuna being dragged onto a boat deck and flipping around and suffering as well. But, um, if you got me about eight years ago, I would probably have little emotion for the tuna and heavy emotion for the dolphin. Like, I'd probably be freaking out right now, yelling and screaming with anger, but, like, I almost feel numb at this stage, like seeing the dolphins being murdered there, we see fish being murdered every second of every day and every other single, like pigs and cows, and I witness so much murder now. Like this just seems like what we usually do to all other animals. So you, we don't want to breed that sort of like, oh my God, the Japanese are evil for killing these beautiful dolphins but uh here in australia we only kill chickens cows pigs uh every other sea animal but we leave the dolphins alone like you know so we're, we're obviously morally better right no so that that's the that's the type of thing i don't want to be like vilifying japan when we should just vilify an animal exploitation in general because all animals are aware self-aware and they all deserve rights the dolphins the tuna the chickens the pigs so let's keep going just want to quickly say, uh, how cute is baby Ali? Uh, pretty cute. Let's go. We quickly learned this wasn't just any fishing <gasps> No. Wow. Like, Pacific bluefin tuna are an endangered species. 
that people would happily eat a tuna but completely lose their minds if uh, someone were to eat a dolphin. Like, can you see the amount of, like, crossovers and contradictions there? Like, people... I personally don't get into the endangered species thing. I personally think that it's about the individual, the individual animals' rights, not the collective species. Um, but, but it's very interesting how, like, there is this big thing about endangered species. And, but when it's a tuna, it's almost like that doesn't apply to the tuna because who cares about a tuna? They belong in a sandwich. Crazy. Let's keep going because I could keep talking. But just uh, thinking about like the shark fin part and humans just dragging sharks out the ocean and cutting their fins off and it just the audacity of human beings to like ever dare call any other non-human animal a pest when we are just the most vicious, careless, greedy species of animal on this planet responsible for, you know, you could think of any single, like, almost any um, species extinction that's going on, and you could just point the finger straight at us. Yet we dare call, you know, kangaroos a pest, or, you know, badgers a pest, or, you know, in Japan they were calling the dolphins a pest, and I just, like, how about we take a big hard look in the mirror and analyze who the real pest is and who's really destroying the earth. Just another like level of human hypocrisy here. Like a shark kills one human being like every so often, <laughs> like you might hear about it here and there. And like sharks are like vilified. There's movies about sharks being like horror movies about sharks. But this here just said, wait, wait, let me just see if I can get that stat. Yeah. So sharks kill about, 10 people per year. What? Is that real? Is that, I find that hard to believe. 10 people per year around the world on average? 10? Is that real? We would have fact checked this. They would have fact checked this. 10. Wow. Anyone would think sharks would be just, just murder, murdering humans en masse the way they go on about it. But let's see how many sharks humans kill. But human beings kill between 11 and 30,000 sharks an hour. Okay. So... That's just human hypocrisy is almost, it's almost a joke, isn't it? Like if it wasn't, didn't have such ser serious outcomes, it would be just, it's like the plot to a, some type of sick comedy. Oh, this is a good point because, you know, it's very important. Like if you are very, like let's just say you only care about certain species of animals, the bycatch from these big trawling nets, like they might be targeting a certain species that you might consider you don't care about, let's just say, and you're happy to eat. But you might be like, I like seals and sharks and turtles and, you know, uh, small whales and these. I don't want to kill them. Well, there's well, there's something called bycatch where the, the nets just drag up indiscriminately everyone in, in its wake. And, uh, you know, so what they do is that, like, they just get the species they want out of the net and then they dump everyone else, like, dead off the side of the boat. Called bycatch. So, you know... If you're eating a certain species of fish, you're actually responsible for supporting an industry that's killing all these species of fish you probably do care about. Even though we shouldn't look at it like that. If the fish is aware, no matter what species they are, they deserve not to be murdered for our trivial reasons. For those of us who spend as much time at sea as I do, uh, we realize that labels often obscure what's really happening at sea. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? Who hates the dolphin safe? stamp on the tuna like annoying hate seeing it like what about tuna safe tuna as well like anyway i get it people love dolphins dolphin safe but anyway these labels there this documentary is quest questioning their efficacy um and uh trust me whenever you see like a humane stamp or a free range stamp or an rspca approved stamp or a sustainable stamp um Dolphin safe stamp on a can of tuna? <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> Prove that that tuna was dolphin safe and there wasn't a bunch caught in your in your tuna net. <laughs> this guy just working for the dolphin safe label just saying, like, there's no way to guarantee it's dolphin safe? Then why do you even have a label? Like, what's the point of the label? It's just basically 
just to it, it's just marketing isn't it it's just marketing to make the consumer comfortable it's okay dolphin safe we can pretty well guarantee it's dolphin safe yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, this is the most hilarious interview i've ever seen ali's just using a little like small amount of logic there to absolutely decimate this he just literally said there's no way of guaranteeing that it's dolphin safe and ali's like well so if you can't guarantee it's dolphin safe what is the consumer supposed to do? And he goes, we'll just buy a can of tuna that has the dolphin safe label. And he goes, but you just said you can't guarantee it. Wow. Man, that was, that was crazy. It's not guaranteed in the same way that uh, the world is a difficult place sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you see, wow, that was great piece of interviewing, Ali. Amazing. This is George Monobot. Um, if you're watching George, uh, you do a lot for the environment, but I didn't uh, like the way that you went out and uh, shot and killed a deer. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, didn't didn't appreciate that. But he's got maybe some really good information on the environment and probably does a lot of work for con conservation and things like that. But there was no need to go out and uh, shoot that deer. Let's keep rolling. Well, well, this is uh, this is about what I was talking about, about the plastic in the ocean being an animal rights issue. And the jo old Georgie boy just said something about the fishing nets. The um, amount of fishing nets is like... Is it nearly 50%? Was that, was that the stat? Did you hear that? It's 46% of all plastic in the ocean, wasn't it? 46% of all the plastic in the ocean is actually discarded fishing nets. How crazy. People will go to enormous lengths. Like, I don't know if you're one of these people, but you carry like 10 kilograms of shopping balancing on your head to get to the car just so you don't use a plastic bag. <laughs> but like, they will probably have about, about 10 cans of tuna balancing on their head you know, just to get to the car so they don't use a plastic bag. Now, come on. Fishing nets. Oh, the turtles. What about the turtles? Fishing, killing the turtles. I guarantee you, like, if anyone saw that, that you know, that video with the, the straw in the turtle's nose, like, everyone, like, that's the final straw for me, no pun intended, but, like, they don't want to use a plastic straw after they see that, that, that turtle having the straw pulled out their nose. But they'll happily go sit down and to a, plate of whatever ocean fish it is you know what i mean and uh not realizing that they're causing the death of turtles anyway causing the killing of turtles anyway if a single sea turtle with a straw in its nose went viral oh the straw in the nose it just come up yes so uh ali's uh we've, we're thinking along the same lines here but basically like crazy amounts more uh sea turtles are killed because of fishing and uh like this this sea turtle with the straw up its nostril just went super viral this plastic straw thing such a diversion isn't it and it's almost like when when an industry has billions of dollars like think about how much money the tuna industry had like just just one subsection of the fishing industry like imagine how much they would pay to keep that quiet you know what I mean? Like when you start bringing billions of dollars in, like you could potentially lose billions of dollars if we make fishing illegal. Okay, well then let's spend, you know, 10 million or 20 million or 50 million making sure this information doesn't get out there. You know, let's have a diversion here and uh, let's call, let's have a diversion plastic straws. Yeah, that that's fine. That'll do, plastic straws. Is there something that people can do to stop this fishing net trash? Uh, one thing that you could do is is uh, eliminate or really, really reduce your intake of, of fish and to really let those, those populations rebound, but also that will eliminate as much materials being used to, to get those fish. How simple was that, eh? <laughs> How simple was that? Yes. Stop eating fish to stop the fishing nets. If everyone did, there, wasn't, there wouldn't be a fishing industry. They wouldn't need massive fishing nets to trawl up fish to feed people. I'm not interested in focusing there. I don't have an opinion about that. Ooh, hit him in the sweet spot. Wow. I asked if that was a she didn't thing. say to eliminate fish. Yeah, I know did. that she didn't. Is uh, eliminate or really, really reduce your intake of, of fish. She didn't say to eliminate fish consumption. Well, with the power of editing, we can just replay that clip right now for, every, for the hundreds of thousands of people watching this documentary. The Plastic Pollution Coalition is the same organization as the Earth Island Institute. These are the same ones who are behind the Dolphin Safe Tuna label, who work with the fish. So follow the money and then you find the truth. Boom, simple. You see why people uh, don't talk about certain things. 
industrialization of fishing that is the problem here. We are pretty much destroying everything at rapid speed. I would actually uh, contest that. It's not the industrialization of fishing that, well, obviously that is a problem, massive problem, but it wasn't the, the cause of the industrialization is because we view fish as products. And when you commodify an animal, there's a massive industry that comes behind it. And that's where you get industrialization. So it's not, it's not like let's move to smaller fishing boats. It's stop viewing animals as food. Stop viewing animals as a resource. Okay. And then we'll stop plundering and murdering them by the trillion every year. Um, so people don't talk about the cause. The cause is when you commodify an egg, when you commodify a dead body of an animal, when you commodify the dairy that comes out of a cow for their calf, then you have a massive industry that comes behind it because you've essentially created a product, haven't you? You've created a capitalist sort of function from this commodity. And uh, that's the problem. We don't need smaller, sustainable fishing boats. We need to stop stabbing innocent beings in the neck and stop and let, just leave them be. Need a grape. Five million fish killed a minute. Five million fish killed every minute. That's a holocaust. Every minute. Just want to take this time to give a massive shout out to Sea Shepherd and Captain Paul Watson here, living legend and amazing direct action organization. They are deliberately not engaging with the most important issue of all. See, old Georgie boy, he did shoot that idea, which I didn't agree with, um, but he does drop a few pretty decent truth bombs, that's for sure. I have looked long and hard, seriously, at trying to find an example of where a large-scale extraction of wildlife is sustainable. It just doesn't exist. <laughs> she put it so simply too, like, just trying to figure out, like, I've looked long and hard at how, like, a large-scale extraction of wildlife could be sustainable. And she's like, it just doesn't exist. <laughs> well, wow, it's a fairy tale, like everything else animal agriculture and the fishing industry tell us. Wow, what a surprise. Oh, the, the audacity of, like, the best way to save fish is to eat fish. How crazy and silly and contradictory. People swallow this stuff hook, line, and sinker. It's a fishing pun for you. For me, the idea is not to stop fishing. For me, the idea is to do more sustainable fishing. To do more sustainable fishing. To do more fishing? <laughs> this guy is hilarious. Wow. Basically, the more blue ticks they handed out, the more money they made. This is a very, this sustainable blue tick labeling is similar to the RSPCA labeling or um, red tractor labeling, you know, where they, where they, they essentially get a little bit of money from the farmers uh, in exchange for the label. And this is like a financial incentive to sort of put more labels on uh, products, whether they are accurate or not. <laughs> you know, this part here, like about the uh, industrial fishing or taking fish that other people in West Africa need to eat. Like, I think there just needs to be a global shift of consciousness surrounding eating animals. Like, you know, it's not like, you know, I... There needs to be a way of feeding people that doesn't involve plundering the oceans, no matter if it's small fisheries um, or big ones, basically. Like greenhouses, vertical farming, just bringing plant foods to countries, not so they don't have to rely on dragging fish out of the ocean and then going out risking their lives and dying to, to bring fish back for their family. Like, So I just think this needs to be this global shift away from, you know, animals being food. <laughs> I get it, survival situations are different. You survive, trying to survive. Like, look, if you're about to die, <laughs> you don't have a choice. A lot of people don't have a choice in the world. They're not as privileged as us in the West, I get it. But if it was just a way to bring plant foods to these people, like to people all over the world, then we should just go for that solution. So what people actually don't probably think about when they're eating fish is that you got a 50-50 chance that it come from a fish farm. A big, you know, crowded disease-ridden fish farm. And uh, you probably just think, oh, wow, I've got this vision in my mind of this guy on a boat out there, you know, reeling in a fish the old-fashioned way. But no, you're probably 50-50 chance you're eating, you know, some polluted 
poor little fish who's suffered inside of a fish farm and been sucked out with some big tube and uh, processed a little bit, of, you know, processed like in a little slaughterhouse, a little bit, a little not too far away from the farm. So, so just have the slavery uh, part in Thailand. It's pretty, pretty crazy uh, that they are essentially taking people, sort of luring them on these boats and then keeping them there, threatening them, bashing them, abusing them, and you're out at sea. Who's gonna come find you out there? Like. Really crazy. Murderers. I've seen images of pilot whales being uh, murdered in uh, Faroe Island, so yeah, it's a uh, horrible, disgusting murder and animal abuse. Um, when you see animals being murdered in the water, like the entire water just turns blood red. It's like something out of a horror movie. But I began to wonder whether sustainability was truly the right goal for how we took care of the ocean. There we go. And he's real, Ali's realising that sustainability just means it can go on and on forever no matter how much suffering it causes. Like, although some things to do with the environment and animal rights meet up, and some things to do with the environment and animal rights completely oppose each other. So I'm an animal rights activist because if I was an environmentalist, you know, I wouldn't mind this hunting of the pilot whales in the Faroe Islands so much since it's so sustainable, you know, but for me, I see it's an animal rights violation. You're not cutting animals' heads off while I'm around. I don't, like, I'm never going to support that. You know, I don't support culling of animals if you think it's bad for the environment. And these things, when that where animal rights and the environment cross over. A chicken, a whale, exactly the same value. It has one life. And... So here we go, this, this whale hunter is actually calling out the hypocrisy of people telling him not to hunt whales while they're eating chickens and, you know, cows and pigs and salmon. So yeah, he still shouldn't be killing the whale, but he's, I think his point is strong. But I never considered the lives of these animals in their own right, or whether they could feel. See, now Ali's going on to animal rights and can the animals feel and do, do they have moral value individually and not just through the environment and through sustainability and just looking at them all as collectives, which is a problem when you look at any group as a collective, you lose it, they lose their individuality, but I like how it's coming here towards the end. Ah, oh, Dr. Clapper, how's it going, mate? And we had, a, of course, Dr. Gregor as well. Fish don't make omega-3 fatty acids. Uh, fish don't make omega-3s, where do they get them from then? Oh, maybe it's something that they're eating. The algae cells that are making the omega-3 fats. So what you're telling me, Dr. Clapper, is I don't have to stab trillions of fish in the neck, suffocate them, kill all, this, all these other sentient animals and throw them off the side of the boat as bycatch and destroy the oceans and cause all of these other horrific abuses, including human rights violations. Just to get omega-3, I can just have a algae supplement? Wow, thanks for telling us that. <laughs> now everyone should be vegan, right? Yeah, well, if only it was that simple, eh? So you're not gonna miss out on taste. It's gonna be there for you, it's delicious. But you And imagine that, there's even replacements or vegan versions of seafood that you can have. That means everyone's gonna go vegan, right? <laughs> Please. I realized the single best thing I could do every single day to protect the ocean and the marine life I loved was to simply not eat them. <laughs> if we protect more... The biggest thing I could do to protect the oceans of marine life and <laughs> was to stop eating the fish. Well, wow. So simple, Ali. Very well said. And sometimes big ideas make a big difference. That's what we can do. That's what you can do right now. Look in the mirror. Figure it out. Go for it. Now that was a very inspiring speech from that lady about being an activist at the end as well. So they touched on that. What, how cool is this? There's little credits here. Seaspiracy, join the movement. Ali, Lucy Tabrizi. I remember Lucy and Kip Anderson from Cowspiracy. Wow. Lucy used to have a YouTube channel. I remember Lucy. Shout out to Lucy. Wow. All right. So that was Seaspiracy. Um, I reacted enough to it, I think. I don't know if I should just keep reacting to it. I think I've uh, said enough on that. I think it's a very, it was very well made. Uh, it's amazing 
film and thank you to everyone involved. Um, it's very inspiring and motivating. So off the back of this, I think it only makes sense to go around the coast of Australia and start trying to do what the film said, which is encourage people to stop eating fish. So that's exactly what we're going to do. And uh, I hope you guys all enjoy the journey and we'll see where this takes us. So let's do it. What did you think of that? <laughs> Turtles have killed his bike hat. They feel pain and suffer. New study. Yeah, of course they do. They do. Come and face me, fish boy. Oh, why are you so why are you so angry, mate? That's what I want. Why are you getting so angry, bro? Look at that. <laughs> Mercy.